If you rent your property to these three types of tenants, I guarantee you, you are going to hate your life. <laughs> I get a lot of people asking me tenant screening questions all the time, right? So I'm not going to dilly-dally. I want to get right into the meat of this. I'm going to go over the three types of tenants that if you rent your property to them, you're going to hate your freaking life. And the first type of tenant is a tenant I like to call Mr. or Miss Let Me Explain or Mr. or Mrs. Hey, can I call you to talk to you about my situation? Right. You see, as landlords, we run into these folks all the time. Right. You're you're putting out your rental ads. You're you're putting out your criteria uh, in your ad or when people reach out to you. Right. So people reach out to you and you're like, hey, uh, you know, here's my uh, my rental application. And it typically includes like a questionnaire. Right. Asking questions about their income, eviction history, job history, things of that nature. Right. Well, these people. This is like the immediate like red flag needs to go off uh, uh, off the top of your head as soon as they do this. That these people are fucking crap, right? As soon as this happens, you need to immediately know these motherfuckers are crap and you don't want to uh, rent to them at all. They're going to say something like they're not going to fill out the questionnaire. They're not going to answer your questions. They're going to say, hey... Uh, before I fill out this application, can I talk to you for a while? I want to explain my situation. Uh, I, I need to talk to you about this before I give you my answers. Under no circumstances are these people you should ever rent to. There is never going to be a time where their explanation is going to be something good for you. It's always going to be some pulling at your heartstrings bullshit, right? Like, oh, I don't have a job. I can't pay the rent. I would be a terrible bet for you as a landlord. But if I can hook you into a phone call with me, I'm going to try to give you this woe is me story why you should take a chance on me. No, don't let it happen. Don't get yourself into that situation. The moment they ignore your questionnaire and your tenant application process, your screening process, and they try to lure you into that emotional conversation, you cut those sons of bitches. Fatality. The second tenant you got to avoid at all costs is Mr. or Mrs. I have an eviction on my record. Now, this should go without saying. You would think that this would go without saying, uh, but it doesn't, right? In dealing with so many investors throughout the years, I've found that uh, most investors, we all comprehend that like, hey, if these tenants have been evicted, they're bad tenants. I shouldn't rent to them. But the caveat to that is Mr. and Mrs. Eviction kind of morphs itself into Mr. and Mrs. Let Me Explain, right? So if you're watching this video, you already know if you get Mr. and Mrs. Let Me Explain, you already got to cut them sons of bitches, right? But what investors find themselves doing is they get lured into that emotional story, right, from the eviction, right? So in a scenario where you're the property manager, you're the landlord, and you're talking to somebody, and they're like, yeah, I was evicted because I didn't feel like paying my rent to my landlord. What are you going to do, right? I think 99.9% .9 of you out there are going to know, oh, ding, 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 this person's an asshole. I shouldn't rent to them, right? But what happens is we allow ourselves to get lured into that emotional story. They say things like, Oh, yeah, my last landlord, he was a slumlord. He didn't fix up the property, this or that, right? Guys, we're not out here investing in real estate to be Captain Save-A-Ho or Save-A-Joe. Ooh, I can see the liberal keyboard warriors trying to light me up for that one already. We're investing in real estate to make money. If you want to be out there helping people, trying to right all the wrongs in the world, Good for you, man. That's great. I, I love that. But you got to know that it is not part of your actual business. That is a charitable act. That is not a sound business decision. If you're talking about making sound business decisions, any eviction for any reason at any time is an absolute no-go, guys. Even if they pull you in and they give you the story about my last landlord blah, 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 he was a slumlord, this or that. That's why we had to go to court, this or that, right? First of all, 
tenants lie a lot. People that don't pay their rent uh, and go through evictions, nine times out of ten, they're typically lying to you about this. But even in the off chance, the minute chance that those people are not lying to you, and say their their previous landlord was a slumlord, and they really did go to like a big court battle, okay? It goes back to that. You can't be Captain Save a Ho, Save a Joe, right? You can't do that, guys, because any time, you put that tenant into your property, you have lost a little bit of leverage, right? You don't have any more leverage than at the tenant screening process. As soon as you put them in their property, you can't just remove them whenever you want, right? You might have to go through a lengthy eviction, lengthy court battle to actually get them out, right? And do you want to do that with a tenant who's already familiar with, with the court process, who's confident in their ability to take a landlord uh, to court and battle them? No, because a battle just means loss of income, additional legal fees. Again, if you want to be out there saving the world, that's great, but you have to understand trying to take chances on people that have had previous evictions because maybe they, they confused you or, or actually got you to, to buy their story. You have to understand that the moment you place them in that unit, guys, again, you lose a little bit of leverage, right? A little bit of leverage, right? Our job is to mitigate all risks as much as we possibly can to collect that rent. You make a decision like that, you haven't mitigated your risks as much as you could, and you're at a higher probability of not getting your rent and going through that lengthy court process, which is not a profitable activity. The third tenant, if you ever rent to this person, you are going to hate your freaking life, and that's Mr. or Miss I'm the boss, or Mr. or Miss I want to negotiate. Guys, we are property managers. We are landlords. We have purchased an asset, okay, and we are willing to rent out that asset to people. We are not used car salesmen, right? We are not here to negotiate back and forth, right? As I said previously, the moment you put them into your property, you've lost a little bit of that leverage. You never have as much leverage as before you put them in the property. When you're screening them, you have all the leverage in the world. You can do business with them. You could choose not to do business with them. If you put them in your property, the, th the choice of just not doing business with them anymore, it's not simple like just cutting them like that. No, no, no. Now they're in your property. It would require time, money, effort to actually remove them from your property. So a big red flag that you should notice right up front is those people that want to, to negotiate with you right up front, want to be bossy with you right up front, want to set that relationship up where – Hey, I'm Joe Customer, and you work for me, right? They want to treat you like they're you're, you're, you're their server at freaking Applebee's, right? Like, hey, yo, dude, my pop, I need a refill, right? You're not their fucking Applebee's server, guys. You've invested in the asset, okay? You need to treat them more like an employee, okay? Because an employee, right, if you're an employer, what's an employee's job? An employee's job is to make you money. If that employee doesn't make you money, you remove them from your company. You need to think of your tenants in the same way. They're more like an employee than they are a customer, right? With an employee, for them to make you money, what do they have to do? They have to follow the rules and the processes and the procedures that you put in place for them, right? With a tenant, it's the same thing. You need to tell them when to pay rent, how to pay rent, what not to do to your property, right? Right? If they think they're the boss and they think they're running things and they think that they're doing you a favor by renting your property, you are now working for them and that's going to be nothing but a problem. We invest in real estate to make our lives easier and simpler. If you rent to someone who thinks they're the boss, they are going to add additional stress to your life and it's probably going to cost you money. That's not why we get into the real estate investment game. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.